I, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, how we use visuals in the in the book and about energy calamity. And um, what's striking is that there is over a hundred year record, a visual record of activity in the tar sands in northern Alberta. For the researcher. As you come across these images, you realize that there's been a hundred years of storytelling in which the visuals have been just as important for building the sites as has been the industriousness of the engineers. So that over time, um, people have begun to imagine the commercial potential and use these images to sort of sell the project to commercial investors, also to invite government assistance, and in the end to convince the public that uh, it's not only possible to do what we're doing in the tar sands, but it's worthwhile and achievable and a good goal. And so what we've been able to do is trace these sort of symbolic and cultural messages that cut through the images uh, over time and show how they've been consistent um, since the early er age of discovery. Professor Joan Schwartz, who writes about photographs in history, um, tells us that these cultural and symbolic images are kind of shorthand, become shorthand meanings. They take on sort of currency in society. They become the way in which we, if you say tar sands, they evoke it in your mind. This is what it is. This is what it looks like. And um, part of that comes from an earlier era when people believed that photographs were authentic reproductions of places. There was no um, uncertainty about that, that the discovery of the camera and its deployment and use by geologists or journalists in 1890s, 1910, 1920, up to very contemporary times, um, brought with it that sort of certainty that we were seeing an image of something that was real and outside us. And she calls that turning sights, S-I-G-H-T, into sights, S-I-T-E-S. So she, she demonstrates, I think, through her work, um, a way of reading photographs, not only for what's in them, but for their effect on the viewer. And that's what we're trying to use or trying to, uh, let's say, lay out in the book for you as a reader as you begin to engage, engage with the photographs as we go through. Now in the second half of the book, though, things have changed. As time has changed, so has the, the notion of the image. And um, what we begin to find, um, despite some very important, iconic photographs of trucks, and heavy equipment that um, becomes symbolic or iconic of the industry uh, even until today. Um, we find the introduction of a number of new images by critics, uh, n amongst them some photographers uh, who went there with a purpose, maybe just to see it and take images and were stunned by what they saw, or photographers who were there, sent there maybe on contract by Greenpeace to take images to generate discussion around what, what, uh, what people would view. What's intriguing about uh, the digital age and the internet age is that these photographs become instantaneously available, that the number of them available is much, much more than you typically would find in the old days. They might take a dozen photographs and spend all their time producing just one image, and that becomes the image. Now you get... Uh, everything that ever existed on a context sheet and more. Um, but the instantaneous availability globally of the image is what's crucially changed and shifted. And what we argue in the book is what many people have argued about the power of the internet is that um, the civic community that's contemplating and deliberating the pros and cons of the tar sands is suddenly exponentially expanded as people begin to engage with these photographs and, the, and they begin to ask questions about what Canadians are doing or what Albertans are doing in northern Alberta because they saw an image on the internet. And that's the power of the image magnified, I think, 
in, in terms of building a new political pressure group that can influence local politics within Alberta. So that you'll notice now that there's actually quite aggressive efforts by the corporations to try and reverse that. They've developed their own images <laughs> that they're deploying to try and counter the, the critical images that you'll see some of in the book that um, are being found all over the internet. 